big South Korean derby this weekend in terms of Hyung Min Son against Hwang Hee Chan. Obviously, they both had a really disappointing Asia Cup um, not long ago, both coming back. This is Hwang's first game back. This is going to be Son's first start back. So let's get a look at the comparisons in the stats. Yeah, and it's very interesting to look at. Both um, Korean forwards are having stellar seasons. There's going to be a bit of a, a, a showdown, I think, especially that's how um, a lot of the South Korean media are, are, are pushing this in terms of um, Son versus Swang, two forwards into double figures for goals and assists so far this season. There have been some suggestions as well that uh, Huang could be of interest to Tottenham as well in the summer. Maybe we're looking at him considering the form he's in. Um, but let's look at some of the stats um, from, from this season. So um, appearances, obviously 21 for Son, 20 for Huang. Goals, 12 for Son, 10 for Huang. Um, assists, 6 for Son, 3 for Huang. So Son's really been a lot more creative. And uh, as you can see here, shots per night, shots on target per 90. Son's uh, well in front, 1.3, 1 to 0.75. Shots in total. A bit more similar, 2.67 to 2.11. Dribbles per 90. Huang definitely makes a lot more dribbles than Son does. 1.93, nearly two per game um, compared to Son, 1.15. But this is a key one. This is the difference, I think, in the quality of two players. Key passes per game, 1.99 to 0 0.87. So as much as Huang has been very effective in the forward line, when it comes to creating chances and and be and um, helping the team out, Song clearly for me uh, looks like he's head of the game in that. But dribbling wise, when it comes to, um, uh, I think when when look when you look at that dribbling stat, the reason why Huang's is so much higher. It's because when he gets the ball, I feel like he's in space a lot more because of their transitional game. Whereas Son has a lot more players to confront when he, when when he when he gets the ball. So obviously, a lot of these stats can be. Um, kind of not manipulated but because of the teams they play for sometimes the, systems, the stats can yeah. make it make it make a bit of a difference so you, you don't have to it's not it's not a foregone conclusion for example some probably has more shots because spurs have more shots than in, in general than wolves do but I, when you consider all of that Huang is doing a fantastic job for us considering he's playing in a counter-attacking team. He has to kind of take less chances to available to him. And, you know, 13 goal contributions in 20 games is brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's no surprise there. The stats are heavily in favour of Hyung min Son, seeing as Hyung min Son um, the level of the man. And, and Huang, as much as I've been impressed with him, I do feel like he might be missing Cunha this weekend because I feel like them two link up really well together. And I think the partnership of Huang and Cunha has been so vital to Wolves this season in the majority of their games. Don't you feel like that's going to be a big miss for Huang this weekend? Definitely. Um, he's going to have to rely on that partnership with Neto a lot more. But Cunha has kind of been a bit like glue um, in terms of the way he brings other players into play. He's been getting a lot of assists this season as well. So I feel like... Neto and Huang are a lot better when it comes to being isolated on the wing mm. and they can take people on. And I feel like Huang's been more of the finisher of that fun free. I feel like Cunha has been a bit of the facilitator and Neto has been the guy who just drags that front free forward with his amazing dribbling ability. Cunha glues it together and uh, Huang's been the one who usually finished it off. But without Cunha there to facilitate it all, we'll see whether how involved in the game he gets. Well, let's have a look at the general comparison between Huang and Son and, and see where we go from there. Yeah, so in terms of general, as you see, Son's the one in the red here. This is a, a pie chart. This is basically a general comparison. Never put Son season. in red again. Well, it wasn't my choice, unfortunately, but uh, Huang's in the blue. One thing that's clear is you can see the, with the blue at the bottom, those are the defensive stats. So that is something that Huang um, generally performs quite well at. He does make a lot more interceptions, tackles, clearances than um, Sonny does, albeit again, is that because Wolves are a lot more defensive situations than Spurs are? You know, they have a lot less possession, so he's tracking back a lot more. But clearly, he def definitely puts the work in, um, and he's quite good when it comes to the defensive situations. But apart from that, Son definitely, um, you know, he gets a lot more on the balls. You can see touches in the penalty area, progressive passes pass completion, um, shot creating actions, his non-penalty XG a lot higher than Huang as well, more assists. What's interesting, his um, sorry, his non-penalty XG and assists is a lot higher, but his non-penalty XG is very similar. So that goes to show me that um, Huang definitely gets into a lot of goal-scoring positions comparable to Son, even though Son is obviously getting a lot more attacking 
um, chances because of the team he plays for. So that's quite interesting that their their non penalty xG is similar, albeit Sons is still slightly higher. But in general, Sons obviously performing a lot higher in a lot of all these metrics. But Huang is not is still fairly close in quite a lot of them. Do you feel like because I remember speaking with you earlier in the season saying, "Oh, this is just a purple patch for Huang. He's mm. never going to last this throughout the season." Do you feel like? this could be like a one-off season for Wang because like we've never seen him produce these kind of numbers before. Maybe similar to maybe a bit of a um, Almiron from Newcastle last mm. season, how Almiron just had a crazy season last year and he hasn't been able to really replicate it this season. I, first of all, what I would say to that is he was actually really good at Salzburg. Wang, I remember watching him in the Champions League before Wolves signed him and I was actually really impressed with him. And the reason I don't... The, 11 I, goals, 12 assists. Um, for Salzburg. For Salzburg, yeah. Um, yes, we haven't seen these numbers before from him. Same with Cunha, to be honest. We haven't seen these kind of numbers. This is Cunha's before. second season. I think it's Frank's third season yeah. for Wolves. Um, but sh- clearly, Gary Neal has got them getting the best out of them in terms of output. When I say um, it was a purple patch for him, I didn't think it would last. Obviously, I think it was on the that was on a run of like at the time. I think like I think at the beginning of the season he had like five goals and in six games or something ridiculous anyway yeah. he's scoring a lot of goals I didn't think he was going to go on and score like 20 25 goals or anything like that so that's what I meant by pole patch but in terms of him you know at the moment he's on 10 I do expect maybe to him to end the season between 10 and 15 I'll be if he gets more than 15 that'll be an amazing season I'll be I'll be surprised but do I think this is something you can carry on I actually do because the difference between him and Almiron is Almiron was when, I, when, when you talk about purple patch, he was literally picking up the ball from 30 yards and shooting every time and it was going top corner every yeah. time. That was never sustainable. He was never that good of a player to keep scoring those kind of goals, in my opinion. Huang's a bit different. He's getting these goal-scoring positions and he's actually been always a player who gets in good positions. He's actually always been a decent finisher. I just never believed he was going to continue his goal-scoring run like he has done. But to be fair to him, he's been able to keep it up. He's a, he is a good finisher when he gets in one-on-one situations. And he's always been a player who gets in fairly good goal-scoring positions. So I do think he's a good player. He is. He's, I know he's 26 years of age now. Do I expect him to be getting double digits from year, year in, year out? I don't know. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, next year he's going to get ten over 10 goals this year. I wouldn't be surprised if next year he also, get, also gets between like eight and, you know, eight and 13 Premier League goals again. Because I do think he's that good a player. He can get and keep getting those positions. Do you think he's a player that can thrive in an Ange Postecoglou system and, and he is someone that we should be looking at this summer? Obviously, if we're going to look for someone at Wolves and if he can get over his injury problems, you obviously prefer Pedro Neto. But if that doesn't come to pass and let's say Neto goes to someone else or you know he can't get or he gets another big injury this season and for whatever reason we don't go for Neto, would you like to see us go for Huang? The reason I say no is because I don't see him. I don't see where he fits in. I don't. I wouldn't want to play him on the wing, even though he's a fairly decent dribbler. He's not a chance creator. He's not a player who facilitates other players. That's what we want from our wingers. Um, more in general, we don't want a goal-scoring winger. We want a winger who can create chances for a teammate, and maybe if he can, can also score goals. That's the secondary thing. That's Huang's main. Um, his main attribute is is uh, what he's like in front of goal. His um, when he's a good finisher, he's calm in in, in front of goal. See the the difference with him and Neto is Neto is a winger. Neto facilitates other players. His main attribute is his ability to take, take people on and make assists, set people up, get good crosses in, good um, good passes back. That's not Huang. So if we're signing Huang, it might be to be a forward. But do we want uh, Huang to come in and play up front? I, I don't know. I don't think he would be an amazing number nine. I think he could probably do a, do a job, but I don't know if I'd sign him to do that role. So on that basis, just because of the way we play, I don't know if he's the right fit. If we were under Conte, maybe, I think he'd be, in a weird way, a better fit because of the way we like to set up our forwards. But under Ange, I just don't see him being an effective winger under Ange. Mm. Well, I can see him doing okay, but not to the level we want. Whereas Neto is different. I see him being very effective. I mean, Neto could just do it all, though, can't he? Like, he, he obviously you'd want him on the wing, but he can do that role up front as well. I wouldn't want Neto up front for us. I want him on the wing, hundred percent. I wouldn't want him playing in the number nine. You know, you just need someone who's like a dynamite finisher up top in this kind of Spurs system. And I think obviously you'd prefer him on the wing, but if push comes to shove and we get injuries and stuff, I wouldn't have any problem putting him in the number nine. Who, Neto? Yeah. 
I don't, I don't see him as his great finisher. Neto. He's a good finisher. He's a I very good he's okay, finisher. But I don't know. I've I've never seen him as a number nine. I know he plays. He's played in a two up front for for Wolves sometimes, and sometimes up front by himself. I've never been that impressed when he plays up front. To be honest, I always much prefer my wife. No, but what I'm saying is, like I said, I'd much prefer him on the wing. But if push comes to stuff, if we do have injuries, you wouldn't have too many problems putting him there. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Um, but in terms of out and out wingers, let's go and have a look at that winger comparison. And this is what I mean about him being a winger purely. Look how, how when this is when you strip down all the stats and just put the stats that are relevant to wing. Is um, on on comparing to Son, this look how much Son outperforms him. It's just massively. The only thing um, Huang is better at is um, successful take ons, but everything else and sort of success, successful take ons and at the amount of crosses he makes in, into the box, he um, he outperforms Sonny as well. But other than that. It's just Sonny completely outperforming him. And that's what I mean about Huang being a winger. He's more of a wide forward than a winger. And I guess I also put Son into that category as well. But that, that even, but I also think Son is more of a wide forward than a winger. But Son as well has been performing that winger duty for Spurs, especially in recent weeks, recent weeks to a really good effect. Is that just this season, these uh, metrics? Yeah, this is just this season. Um, yeah. So um, I, I also don't think Son... Um, in a weird way, is the winger that we need. I still also prefer him in a number nine in an, in an Ange system to to being out wide. But even that, I'm comparing him to Huang, and he just massively outperforms Huang in all these metrics in terms of shot creating actions, touches in the final third, progressive passes received. So getting in those positions to receive the passes, passes into the penalty area, key passes, progressive carries carries into the final third and into the penalty area. It's just all massively dominated by Sonny. Yeah, and it's what you expect, isn't it? Like, you know, Hyungmin Son's a much better player than Huang Hee-chan anyway. Like, I think in in all the metrics and in, in every facet, even if you don't look at the stats, you could, I could probably told you of that. But look, I think it's definitely something that we need to watch out for this weekend. It's going to be an interesting matchup seeing Sonny come up against Huang Hee-chan, especially after all that happened out in Korea last week. Uh, but that is our comparison between Huang Hee-chan and Hyungmin Son. Let us know in the comment section below your thoughts regarding that matter. Yeah.